it so hot. I must have bought it this Christmas Eve, 1966. I'm the oldest of nine. Uh, we were we were poor, really poor. And uh, you know, I say that at a time when a lot of people were poor, but we were poor. <laughs> And uh, but, but we were a family, you know, we, we did all right uh, until uh, our parents split up and the family split up. And me being 17, I was on my own. Started drinking at an early age. And uh, as I look back on that, once I started, I never stopped. I tried. I went from drinking to drunk. And I never, I never was a social drinker. The disease took me quickly. I didn't even know it. You know, my dad used to see me every now and then, ask me what was wrong with me. I was, ain't nothing wrong with me. You drink. Of course, he was grown. I was, what, 18. <laughs> but, uh, and that continued. Uh, I would work, get fired, quit. Never even remember I had a job. And then I uh, started getting incarcerated. Being incarcerated, you know. I came, I had some kind of prudish feelings about life. Uh, if you're in jail, you're a bad person. And that didn't help with my alcoholism. But, uh, you know, eventually, I, I seen buddies of mine go to the house of hope. I see them on Mount Vernon Avenue sober. Buddy of mine said, man, why don't you try to go to the house of hope? I said, I don't want to go up there. But I had all this time, 90 days and $300 fine for public drunk. I said, well, I can go up to the house of hope, get a job, and leave. That was my plan. Mm -hmm. But when the uh, coordinator went up and talked to the director, he came back to the workout and said, well, he won't take you because uh, you're too much trouble. You know, you fight too much. Then three days later, he came back and said, well, he said he's going to give you a chance. So that's what started my recovery. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't an instant. I said, I can't do this stuff. I'd rather just go get drunk. And they kept saying, don't go, man, stay. We, you know, the guys, they liked me. I didn't like me, but they liked me. And I stayed. I got up the next day, or the next couple of days, went back to work. And I got my little black book. Started reading the prayers out of it. And uh, I said to myself, I'm, I'm going to do this every morning. Then go to work, come home, eat dinner, go to a meeting, come back, read my book, go to bed. I'm not going to go out nowhere. I remember the, the director saying, well, you're saving up too much money. I never will forget that. I had $147 in the bank. I never had that much money. Plus, I never had a bank account. Still don't have a big one. <laughs> but anyhow, that was the beginning of my recovery. I got some jobs, but I always came back to the house. You know? And uh, I did that up until uh, the pandemic and cancer caught me at the same time. And uh, because I recovered, did I? I got treatment for 
cyber knife for treatment of my lungs. Got cured, but it, it wasn't safe for me to work with the pandemic in a, a closed environment like the house. You know, I just do what I do in, in my own recovery program. Having, having worked in the program, and, and people think that's your recovery. No, that's not. My own recovery is my own recovery. And I, I did that faithfully. But I, I failed to mention I got married. I got kids, got daughters, and granddaughters, and grandsons, and stuff. <laughs> and they think I'm the best thing in the world. As a matter of fact, two to three days ago, we had our first family reunion. And I was a ton of people. And it was a glorious time. I, I, I've had a good life. And uh, I've, I've had some illnesses that, that I, for me, I never saw the need to drink again for anything. Uh, out of the nine kids, I'm the oldest, and the baby boy is the only one left. So I've seen my share of, of uh, heartbreak. But it, it would never, it never crossed my mind. One of the things that the House of Hope is really known for is the longevity of the program, that it's not just, you know, 30 days of inpatient and then back out into the world. It's really a long supportive program. Could you talk about that process of it taking time for people to get well and, and kind of what's the, the magic in there? It's about learning how to live without alcohol and drugs and just living with yourself primarily. Uh, if you are not at peace with yourself, certainly not going to be at peace with anybody else. And uh, it's because it's not a cookie cutter program, it's uh, people find their own way, which is the best way. And then it's like anything else. If you do it long enough, you get conditioned. It's like when I was boxing, you know, I learned what I learned. I didn't have to stop and think, oh, he's doing the right hand, you just know what to do. And the same way with playing football now. And the same way with this. My recovery, I just learned step by step for me and others. And that's the way it goes. That's beautiful. And being able to learn from others and then being able to, to share that with others is, is really pretty, pretty amazing. So what have you learned from your recovery? What? Uh, I learned, for one thing, that recovery is not that hard. You have to be careful, but it's not that hard. There's a lot of things I can do that I had never thought about or would have tempted to do, is that I can do almost anything I want to do if I want to do it. Yeah. It is the most thing that I don't want to do. Right. Absolutely. Oh, well, I've done them. Right. So for somebody who's out there who's really struggling, what are some words of wisdom, maybe even one of those cliches, but what are some words of wisdom that really speak to you that, that help you when you're having a tough day? There is an African friend in the recovery program you can't hardly understand nothing he says. And that's what all the guys say. Well, I can't understand him. I said, there's something he says that you can't understand. He said, what's that? He says, I can't do it no more. How profound is that? Very. Absolutely. When you get to the point where you say, I can't do it no more, 
then you look around for a way to not do it anymore. I want to be in. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much for taking your time, coming out here, sharing your beautiful experience with us. Oh, and thank you. All of the, uh, the, the many years and, and, and the, really the, the significant changes that, that, that you made in your life and then were able to turn around and, and make such amazing you know, changes to the world and being able to, to really help out. Probably, like I said, more than, more than you know. Um, I'm I really grateful for the opportunity to live the life I've lived. I am. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you.